Hello, beta testers. <laughs> Negative. Star Wars Jedi Survivor Reviews. Star Wars CPU Survivor. So far, the loading screen is pretty okay. I have no idea what it's like past the title screen because it doesn't load past that at the moment. Runs like my ass after Taco Bell. 3080, pertaining to their graphics processing unit, is not good enough to run the game, apparently. Smiley face. RTX 4080, i9, 32 gigs, 6,000 DDR5, the latest drivers on Windows 11, I can get around 30 FPS. What is this, an Xbox? Running an RTX 4080, averaging 45 FPS, fantastic. Even NASA can't run this game in 60 FPS. This now makes like the sixth AAA game to release broken on PC at launch, this year alone. Stuck between 36 and 41 frames per second. Avoid. I'm getting a refund. Damn. Someday maybe I'll qualify for a nice GPU too. Wishlist link in the description. Until then, I'll settle for a like bitch. garbage optimization. Stop releasing games like this. Performance issues, recommend waiting, buggy mess, another AAA game launch broken with horrible performance. It's getting old, $70, and the promise to fix it later, weeks or months, you know, soon. Another garbage PC port from a AAA studio. That's gaming in 2023 for ya. Game runs as well as Brendan Fraser in The Whale. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'd wait a couple of patches, 20 or so minutes of gameplay, two crashes already, lots of hitching. We'll update my review if things change. Getting around 85 to 90 FPS at 1440p Ultra when it's running correctly on a 13,900K 4090 system. You know, my wish list is in the description in case you guys are just tripping GPUs. Star Wars Jedi FPS Survivor, best crash simulator I've played in a long time. Do the developers test on NASA computer? Optimization is horrible. Can't even start the game. I am refunding for the PS5, bro. You're still gonna, okay. Performance is not cool, bro, please fix. This is not where the fun begins, well done. It's refunding time. I'll change my review when the performance is fixed, but for now I couldn't possibly recommend this game. I see Jedi Survivor pop up, and then my game crashes. I can't even get to the main menu, and I run a 3080. I know it isn't top of the line, but I can't even get to the main menu. Look how sad it is you got people with really, like, multiple hundred. Some of these GPUs are more expensive than the consoles themselves. That's just the GPU. And you've got them going, <laughs> I know I don't have the newest computer. Oh my god, because y'all can't optimize your game. Please, I want to love and play the game, but the PC port just ain't it. Do not buy until they fix it for PC, if they fix it for PC. I am more than willing to change my review if they fix the launch issue soon. But it cannot be in a year from now like most AAA titles. In quotes, in order for the team to hit the respawn quality bar, Provide the team the time they need and achieve the level of polish our fans deserve. We added six crucial weeks to our release schedule. Star Wars Jedi Survivor will now launch globally on April 28th. If this state of the game is what we deserve, I don't want it. Seems games mysteriously running poorly only on PCs these days. From this point, I wonder if I'll ever buy games on Steam anymore. Maybe just the not-safe-for-work ones. Ah, I see you are a man of culture. It runs so badly that my 4090 can barely hold 60 FPS at times. 
My system is completely brute forcing through the issues, so I can't imagine how it runs on lesser hardware. <laughs> you mean like mine? One day we'll get stable video game releases. We'll change to positive if the game gets fixed. You know, I've been reading through these negative reviews for a minute now. And uh, you're probably only going to get a portion of them after I edit it, because some are just boring and reiterating the same thing. No disrespect. It's not a competition to be interesting in the negative review section. But it's so civil. It's so many people going, I will change this to a positive review if my specific issue is fixed. Holy shit, man. A lot of people will just fire it off and forget. You're never going to see them here again. But they're also taking the time to say specifically they'll change it to a positive review if the issue is fixed. These are people you're, f you know. But whenever one person flies off the handle, frothing at the mouth, journalists and developers hold this person up like they're indicative of the entire player base. It's almost like the dorky shut-in dweebs like me who would elect to spend their time and excess money on a Star Wars video game, a hobby as harmlessly wholesome as sitting down in front of a screen and swinging a lightsaber around in a fantasy world. These people have the sense to articulate their issues in a reasonable, civil way and the justified anger that they have for paying thousands of dollars for hardware and then $70 for a game that, of course, is crashing before they hit the title screen is going to make them upset. The shader compilation stutters every time something new happens on screen. Awful performance that cannot be improved through any setting changes. No DLSS support, only FSR that looks awful with a lot of shimmering. Ray tracing options useless, gives micro stutters every second. The people who are thinking that Respawn can fix this game with patch updates are daydreaming. Forgot Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order? The stuttering issue is still present to this day, and they can't fix it. It's been five years. One more terrible PC port is added to 2023's worst optimized games list. Holy guacamole. The devs are probably going to make it a top priority to give the players the best experience in the next weeks after they've excused themselves for delivering the game in such poor condition. They should have made it a top priority at the start during the actual development. It's just sad. Embarrassing performance makes this game unplayable right now. 3900 16GB RAM RTX 3070 cannot run this game at a playable state on low settings. Not that it matters. There's no FPS difference between low settings and epic settings on my system. The game just refuses to go above 45 FPS, and every new thing makes it stutter. I'm playing at 1080p. By the way, the game can't do 1080p, 60 FPS right now. Got you feeling like you're playing on a console, console. You're one of us now. You best start believing in console tales, cause you're in one. What's worse? It can't do 30 FPS either. It's stuttery and it'll sometimes drop below 30 FPS. That's, that's Gotham Knights right there. I am using an RTX 4070 Ti and an i9. When am I going to get a... B what about me? You know, you, you guys aren't using it, clearly. You guys aren't using it. You're playing Star Wars. You're just giving the mouse more money. They got you. They put a white boy on the box. And you're like Indiana Jones. You're about to grab it. You're like, is this safe? They're going to be talking about student loans like Redfall, like like Saints Row. Is, it's going to be okay, right? It's, it's a Star Wars game. I mean, Respawn made it. I mean, it's, it's got to be fine, right? Got you. The mouse wins again. Constant stuttering, terrible performance, 100% utilization in the settings menu, but only 40% in-game. How do you push out a game with stuttering in the first cutscene? We should ask WB Montreal that was trying to hide that 30 FPS until the game was ready to come out. When you choose your character, the game's like, I just want to be a cutscene. I just want to be a cutscene. Can you guess the answer to when they'll stop kicking trash like this out the door? Leave it in the comment section below. My name's Kyle, and I hope that you have a perky and, you know, 
nice areola day. Bye. Bye. Remember good games?